Hello everyone. This is Adij. I'm a grade 10 student from Mumbai. So today's problem is chef and professor. The difficulty level of this problem is easy medium and the only prerequisite required to solve this problem it is bitwise operators although there are a lot of observations required so you also need to know about some proof techniques to understand why those observations are true. So in this problem we are basically given an integer n and we need to find the permutation of length 2 to the n such that the maximum bitwise or bitwise or of any even length subarray is minimized. So we need to find out one such examples and the number of such permutations. We need to answer this for t independent test cases uh, and in which in each test case we are given the value of n and for each test case we need to print two lines. The first is the number of permutations modulo 10 to the power of 9 plus 7 and the second line is 2 to the n space separated integers denoting one such permutation. So for example if we have n is 1 then we need to have a permutation of length 2 and 0 comma 1 is the only possibility and the number of such permutations are only 2 which is 0 comma 1 or 1 comma 0 and in the second example the maximum uh, ZOR value will be 2 and there are 8 such permutations. So actually if you try out a few more values you will find out that the maximum ZOR value actually seems to be 2 to the n minus 1. For example when n is 3 you will realize that the maximum ZOR value will actually be 4. Uh, there will be some number of permutations I won't reveal the number but uh, Basically, our claim is that the maximum ZOR value is 2 to the n minus 1. So now I'll make a series of observations which will help prove this claim and also will, which will help find out the number of such permutations. So the first observation is that if we let the cost of the array to be this maximum bitwise ZOR of the array, then you should realize that rotating the array does not change the cost of the array. So I'll explain this observation with an example and you, you can look at the official editorial, the written one, for a formal proof. So I'll be taking the example of n is 3, which basically means that the, the array numbers are from um, 0 to 7. So I've actually uh, replaced the number 5 with 8, so that doesn't matter too much. So I'll be explaining this observation with the help of an example and you can look at the official written editorial for a formal proof. So let's say we have n is 3 and this means that the numbers are from 0 to 7 and uh, basically let's consider an arbitrary array which has uh, these elements and basically I considered all 8 possible rotations of the array and what you should realize from this example is that first of all the ZOR of all elements is equal to 0 and this will hold not only for this array but for all arrays which have every integer from 0 to 2 to the n minus 1 appearing exactly once. So for all permutations of length 2 to the n, the property that the ZOR is 0 will hold. You can look at some examples to understand why this is true. But now the key idea is that let's consider any even length subarray. So for example, let's consider 0 to 6. So notice that 0 to 6 is present in all the um, all the permutations except for the first permutation which is this one. So in this one 0 comma 6 is not present as, as an even length subarray but all uh, in all the other permutations 0 comma 6 is there and the idea is that this even length subsequence over here actually has a ZOR value equal to 0 ZOR 6. The reason why that is true is because the ZOR of these values will be equal to 0 times 0 ZOR with the ZOR of these two values and hence the ZOR of like this even length subarray is the same as the ZOR of this even length subarray. And you can take another example 2147 then you will realize that in some of the subarrays 2147 is not there. For example in this subarray 2147 is not there. But the key idea is that the ZOR of the remaining elements is actually the same as the ZOR of 2147 
and that's why basically the zor of an even length subarray does not change with the rotation of the array and that's basically why the cost of the uh, cost of the even length subarray will remain the same for um, all rotations of the array now let's make the second uh, observation based on some definitions so let's define a number to be small if it is less than 1 left shifted n minus 1 or basically 2 to the n minus 1 and let's call a number big if it's greater than 2 to the n minus 1 then what you should realize is that all the big numbers will have the n minus 1 bit set because the big numbers belong in the range so this is greater than or equal to so all the big numbers belong in the range 2 to the n minus 1 and less than 2 to the n that's why all the big numbers will have the n minus 1th bit set but all the small numbers will not have the n minus 1th bit set so that's why b is or s will have the n minus 1th bit set and if you take some examples of the permutation with small numbers and big numbers so for example this one then you'll realize that the zor of an even length subarray will always be greater than or equal to 2 to the n minus 1 so basically the answer will be greater than or equal to 2 to the n minus 1 and what we claim is that the answer is 2 to the n minus 1 so you realize this immediately from uh, basically the zor value is 2 uh, to the n minus 1 and you realize this from some examples and this is basically a, a way to informally prove it uh, why this is true now let's actually try to find out a construction for an array which has the the cost equal to 2 to the n minus 1 so cost can be made equal to 2 to the n minus 1 if we alternate between small and big numbers in pairs so if we alternate between small small and big big in pairs then this is the only possible way to basically create the array with the um, cost equal to 2 to the n minus 1 you can check out the official editorial for formal proof but if you take a few examples you'll realize that when we have small small big big then the zor of this is 2 to the n minus 1 so we are ensuring that uh, over here so let's say i label them as s1 s2 big 1 big 2 then small one zor big one should be equal to 2 to the n minus 1 small one zor small 2 zor b1 zor b2 uh should be equal to 2 to the n minus 1 and so on and in this way you can verify that we actually make the answer equal to 2 to the n minus 1 and this is the only way so now let's try to find out all possible rotations of this uh of this construction so uh one so uh, before we find out all possible ways uh they also asked us to print an example so a nice little example to do this is just to alternate between uh, the numbers i i plus 1 and then i plus uh, 1 left shifted n minus 1 so i plus 2 to the n minus 1 and i plus 1 plus 2 to the n minus 1 so this is one uh, small construction which you can use for an example and this is like a small trick which you can verify and now let's uh, that will basically be the second line of the output now let's try to find the number of permutations so let's basically try to find out how many arrays are possible and basically how many rotations are there so let's say we again take an example of ns3 and let's say that this was our construction so small small big big then small small then big big so basically what you should realize is that there are only four such rotations which create uh, which are distinct so there will be only four distinct rotations the reason for that is because if we uh, label them as s s b b s s b b and if you perform the rotations three more times then you will realize that the rotation after this actually is a repeat of the first rotation and that's why there will going to be only four distinct rotations and basically the answer is 4 into the number of ways to form one such array so how many ways are there to form one such array let's try to find that out so let's say that the number of ways to form one such array is x then the answer is 4 into x and let's try to find out x 
so remember that x is the number of ways to form one such array or basically to form s s b b then s s and b b so uh, let's try to find out the number of ways then the key realization is that we can basically fix the small numbers so let's say we fix the small numbers so the number of ways to do that is just 2 to the n minus 1 factorial uh, the reason for that is because we can basically permute these small numbers in uh, the number of uh, in factorial ways and there are 2 to the n minus 1 such small numbers that's why they are going to be or uh, 2 to the n minus 1 factorial ways of arranging these small numbers and the reason why we chose to arrange these small numbers is because these big numbers so this b is determined by s directly so we know that small z or b should be equal to the answer which is 2 to the n minus 1 or basically should be equal to the cost and that's why we basically fix the values of the big numbers once we get to know the value of the small numbers so that's why x is just 2 to the n minus 1 factorial and the number of ways to do this is just 4 into 2 to the n minus 1 factorial so this is our first line and the second line is this a uh, nice little construction uh, which we figured out and now i'll just show you the code which implements this idea so in the code i basically first pre compute the factorials of all numbers up to the uh, largest possible value of 2 to the n then for each test case i take in the value of n if n is not equal to 1 we print the answer which is 4 into uh, n minus 2 uh, uh, 4 into 2 to the n minus 1 factorial so basically it's this number so that's what i print in the first line if n is not equal to 1 if n is 1 then the answer is 2 and then basically i have the construction which i mentioned so that construction is i followed by i plus 2 to the n minus 1 so basically that's the whole code and now i'll just submit this to see that it gets accepted So as you could see, my code got accepted. If you like this video and my solution to this problem, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Also, if you had any doubts, do leave them in the comments down below.